Ooh, T.I. and Tiny. Girl. Y'all might want to try to clean this up because it ain't looking good for y'all right now, sis. Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black knee neck on. What's going on, y'all? We got a King of Reads video to do today, girl. We got a lot of things to talk about today. <laughs> Baby, Thursday. I'm going to try to get this video out like early today. Y'all see the sun is coming down, so I apologize for that. By the time I get done recording this video, it'll be, you know, it'll be dark. But, girl, a lot of things happened in the last two days. Um, the story developed about T.I. and Tiny being accused of some pretty interesting things. And I'm looking like... Woo! So I already did a detailed video about this on Patreon because when we're talking about the things that T.I. and Tiny are accused of, girl, I, I, I really couldn't... I, I can talk about it in the Keith Reeves video, but I can really go in there in um, a Patreon video so I don't have that many restrictions. But I will be talking about that. We also got to talk about this um, GameStop situation, some other things. And girl, what's going on with Mark Daly? Apparently Mark Daly ain't interested in staying with Kenya. He is interested in divorce and he is working on a show um, that is going to be surrounded what, what, talking about his restaurant and whatever he's doing in New York. I don't see how this is going to happen in the middle of a pandemic. And normally TV shows take a minute, so we will be talking about that. There's a couple of other things. Um, we gotta talk about Big Lotto, or soon, well, Mulatto, soon to be Big Lotto, because she's talking about changing her name. Um, and I gotta drag Cardi B for a minute, because, sis, we don't care. But, girl, we gotta get into these things, honey, so bear with me. Girl, let's go ahead and get into this mental health check in. I'm really well I want to you know talk really really quick because like when I'm, I'm excited like I want to talk about this stuff because it's a lot I got a lot of thoughts but my mental is doing really good I'm feeling really great I'm in a great space of creating content getting my thoughts out and just analyzing things I spent half the day researching this GameStop stuff to understand what is going on with short-term stocks and shorts whatever you call it um, I've been just doing the journalism um, investigation work like I really been like ah. I've been watching videos and reading stuff so that's what I've been doing all today uh, and um, just you know kind of just relaxing getting up in the morning having a routine and it's something that I have not been on and I mean I'm like oh my gosh this is what it feels like to be in a good positive space like a hundred percent so I'm thankful for that so with that being said y'all know when I'm in better space yeah, we get better content yes but girl, some of this kind of, some stuff I'm gonna be talking about today is going to be a little bit heavy. So if you can't, you know, you know, you can't, you don't like stuff like that, I definitely encourage you to like take a pass on this one. But girl, I got some stuff coming for y'all. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this tea for today. But let's start off real smooth and real, you know, warm up. Merritt Medicine just dropped their um, new season trailer. And I loved it. I love it. I've never seen a bad season of Married to Madison, honestly. There has not been one bad season of Married to Madison. Married to Madison brings it every season. And they're going to be bringing an a, a old face back. Lisa Nicole Cloud will be making a comeback. Um, and it seems like that the dentist, a.k.a. Um, what's her name? Because she had me blocked on heaven. It will be, you know, dragging Lisa a little bit like her. Can you keep a man? Ooh, make your man stay or whatever. Um, so, yes, this... Season of Married to Madison, they're going to be introducing a new um, housewife, or what would you call it, Married Madison wife, or whatever you want to call her. Uh, and somebody have called, they have literally called her the knock-off version of <laughs> my girl Mariah. Mariah! Um, I can see it a little bit, but I, that y'all so mean. Y'all so mean, but she do kind of look like a knockoff version of Mariah. But we're going to see what she's offering. Uh, but Mariah will not be on this season. We didn't see her in any of it. So, but, you know, Mariah is currently in talks to, with a lawsuit against Bravo for whatever reason. Like, you still get an executive producer credit for whatever I'm, I'm thinking. But Mariah is pissed off that she will not be on this season. She hasn't filmed. And remember, she didn't get no contract. So, remember all of them was dragging. So, I think this season is going to be really good because these are all, like, doctors. So, with this coronavirus stuff going on, um... To see them how they're working around this is going to be very interesting. But I wonder how they were able to film and do all of this because all these folks work in the medical field, which means they are exposed to COVID more than normal. So um, 
what do they do? How do they do production without them folks contracting and all that? I wonder. How are they able to do it safely? I haven't heard anything from Metro Medicine and Real Housewives of Atlanta and a, uh, a couple of other housewife franchises have had some exposure. So, girl, y'all tell me, y'all watch the trailer, tell me what y'all think about it. So, Sabrina Peterson has came out and she is accused um, T.I. of holding a gun to her head in front of children. Um, I wonder, is it her children? And accused him of, you know, a lot of things and provided screenshots of, from victims who have experienced similar stories to her. Um, and some of it, from, I'm re reading it from the Jasmine brand, is giving um, kidnapping, drugs, like threesomes, all type of stuff. And what made me immediately like jump out to me is that, and I love candy, don't get me wrong, but it's like, girl, like right off the bat, I'm like, I, I believe all of these victims. And then I started to think about, you know, celebrities, threesomes, Atlanta, immediately candy came to mind because Portia had, Portia, well, Portia got the rumor from Phaedra that uh, Candy and Todd be doing that. And in the last episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Candy had, you know, talked about making folks sign three, um, you know, non disclosures when they be doing stuff. And I, I, I believe for, I believe that Candy is very, like, if she's gonna do what to do, she's doing it safely. Candy's not that person. From what I've seen, she's, she doesn't even drink and all that. Uh, but, for her friends that are also in Atlanta, who she's close to, Tiny and um, T.I., all these accusations, I'm kind of wondering, like, time, like if, if Tiny has been doing what she's been accused of, Candy, did you know about these things? And not that you know about it, like, as serious as you were about the situation you experienced with Phaedra, are you going to distance yourself from them? Because they've been accused, and it's been over 15 to 20 victims that have been, like, Sabrina posted screenshots, screenshots of folks who have said, you know, this happened to them, and I remember one story in particular that jumped out to me immediately was this woman who said that when she was 16 or something, her friend, she had alleged, her and her friend were 16, like they were minors, and they had met up with uh, T.I. backstage in Colorado doing All-Star Weekend for what it looks like because, you know, looking at the times and stuff, that she was invited backstage and um, she had got introduced to drugs, like T.I. had said, you know, introduced drugs and, you know, wanted to have sex with them and had sex with them. Uh, and there have been other stories of uh, Tiny, you know, and T.I. being in the club and, you know, getting a stripper to come back to the room or come back to the house and, you know, they kind of, Tiny doing all the talking to get them to get them to come back. They come back and, you know, they get into it or like drugs are offered. They don't want to do drugs. And girl, Sabrina posted also on Instagram, she was like, cocaine makes you talk tough. All cocaine good, coke. Especially when it had you out here looking for coke. Um, child, it's a lot. So Tiny has been responding to it a lot. Like Tiny has been clapping back. And what's funny is that Tiny be really taken up for T.I. And T.I. don't be giving two dams about her. Like it just, it's, it's just, he don't be, you can tell he don't really be caring. Uh, and T.I. has been in a lot of like headlines over the last, and it's always something like that is similar to this sexual. Not too long ago, um, he was out here having whole conversations about his daughter's hymen. Um, and then he headed to Red Table Talk and talked about that, tried to explain himself out of that. Then also the conversation came about Tiny and T.I.'s relationship or whatever. And in that, even in that, he was disrespectful to her. So if T.I. does not have um, any respect for the woman who he is married to, who he took an oath in front of God with the Bible and all that other stuff, whatever they be doing, and also his see his child, someone that he helped bring in this world, I can believe that he's out here being disrespectful to folks who he just meets randomly, who he wants to have sex with. And I also believe that um, Tiny is out here doing and having these conversations with these folks because Tiny ultimately to me, this is me, uh, like she wants to keep her man and she would do anything to keep him and make him stay. And I don't even really think that Tiny's probably even interested, probably, that's why the stories of, you know, she getting jealous and feeling some type of, because Tiny is only doing that because that keeps her connection with T.I. So it is a hot flaming mess. 
Um, and Tiny had posted a picture uh, of apparently it was Sabrina uh, children with Ti talking about so they were just you were just calling him Uncle um, the other day. This is what she posted. She said, "Hold up, so you want your abuser to train your sons? He was just Uncle two years ago. Now when did you say my husband assaulted you? Did you change your mind or you changed your back? What's up with you today, boo? I'm not gonna read the rest of it because I'm not reading the rest of that because that sounds like very much victim blaming. Ain't no way in the hell that somebody's accusing me of something like this. And my first response was, "Why you got such a such?" She's like, "Girl, I know you ain't out here. I ain't did none of those things." I'd be like, "Girl, you crazy? I ain't did none of that. Like, what's your tea? Like, we need to talk about this because this sounds crazy. But it sounds as though Tiny is trying to make her look bad by putting her like, "Okay, if you saying this, then why you got your kids around?" So it kind of takes the, the the light on her like. Just you put your kids on danger instead of keeping the energy focused on the person who has been accused of abuse. Yeah, uh, I will be updating the story, but like I said, with this type of stuff, this is very heavy. So I will be talking about this exclusively on Patreon. Like, girl, it, it's way too much, and y'all ain't gonna get me in no trouble um, when it comes to these things. So, girl, I did a whole video about it on Patreon, and we'll be doing some more stuff as the story develops. So follow me on Patreon on the link below, and I appreciate those who already are supporting me on Patreon. But child, this is a lot. Y'all tell me what y'all think about it. Sound off in the comments, honey. Let's move on to the next conversation. Oh, big lot of dumbass. <laughs> So, y'all favorite uh, wannabe trap rapper from Ohio who moved here probably at the age of six or seven or whatever to Atlanta has thought about changing her name. She was in the, uh, she was doing some type of interview or something. She was talking to somebody and she said that she's talking about changing her name and that people have already guessed, some fans have already guessed what she would change her name to. Um, now, she did kind of acknowledge that, you know, it's not the best name and da da da. So, it seems like the bullying does work. Her getting dragged does work. She's been getting her ass in up the last six months, as she should. Um, so, girl, this is coming all after this conversation about Danny Lee or Danny Lay um, not too long ago. Like, these folks, like, y'all gonna mess around and y'all brands are gonna be forever damaged because folks are tired. People are tired. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that's pushing black folks to be just sick of the shit. Especially when we turn it on the TVs and we're not seeing any folks who look like us. Like I was just like reading a little bit of this article about this woman who had face face surgery. Jesse Wu had posted a picture of her. And it's just like, there are so many black folks that are out here. Like we didn't went from wearing contacts and all this other stuff to make us look European. To now we are here getting surgeries and stuff to get the cat eyes, the lips, the nose and all this other stuff. And it's a lot like me and T actually talked about this on Patreon. Um, we talked about the the Instagram uh, filter, how it affects. There's an actual article written by the in, in the New Yorker talking about this, and I'm going to read and talk about it on, um, a little bit more. But like everybody wants to look like this, everybody wants to look the exact same, and we are here. These folks out here looking like Android robots, and this shit is just not cute to me. So Mulatto, I'm just thinking about changing her name to to whatever, but I'm really thinking it's Big Lotto. I think she's going to change her name to Big Lala, which would be good for her. Um, I think she had, like, she ain't got to do too much. People are really following her because of her look. Um, so she can have a little bit of talent. She was sore, so I think this is a best decision for her brand-wise, um, for her to clean up and just like, hey, girl, I recognize that. That's all you got to do. Like, ain't nobody ready to throw y'all to the wolves. We just ready to throw y'all to the wolves if y'all ain't saying, hey, don't throw me to wolves yet. Let me let me clean my stuff up. But y'all got to get this together because there's no reason why in 2021 you should be still calling yourself when like we talking about colorism constantly and how black dark skinned women are being treated in the industry and stuff. And we just saw that video of Rick Ross treating again on Twitter um, with like I can't think of her name. She was on Love and Hip Hop. I cannot think of her name. Oh my gosh, she was light skinned. I can't think of her name. She was singing and she sounded a hot ass mess. Then you had this dark skin artist come and sing and sound, sing the song, the same song, and sounded brilliant. And Rick Ross and other folks were very hard on her. Um, and she sounded amazing. She sounded good. She sounded way better than what's her name did. And it just goes to show you this is this is how colorism works. And also, uh, Rick Ross is trash as hell anyway because he said he couldn't sign no women to his his label because he would want to sleep with them. The massage, it's the massage noir for me. Uh, so it just lets you know like what is going on and how hard it is. So yes, you know, you need to change your name and I hope you change it to something better than that. Like girl, like I'm glad you're not on here saying, well, I ain't did that. I'm out here rapping. I'm out here speaking for light skins and da da da. Like and speaking of that, let's move on to another ignorant light skin, Lisa Ray. 
Lisa Ray, I have to go back to my old girl who I cannot stand. But Cadillac Kimberly, I like Cadillac Kimberly dragged the entire crap out of um, Lisa Ray. <laughs> Let's get the bullshit out of the way. Let's talk about Lisa Ray. Like, Lisa Ray says, I, like, let me back up because I'm getting pissed off just thinking about it. But Lisa Ray was on, um, I don't know what trash YouTube show, Fox Soul, where they got all these uh, old, older black aunties that don't have no range talking. You got, um, what's her name, Claudia Jordan, um, and these other women just on here. And a lot of them just don't have the range to have some of these conversations, but yet they're having a conversation. And on this video, you had Lisa Ray kind of uplifting and saying that there's nothing wrong with Danny doing this, this song doing this video or whatever it's like she, like uplift yourself like celebrate your skin and this and that and compare it to ndre lisa ray shut the hell up shut the hell up we're not coming to you for we lisa ray you literally your claim to fame is being a light-skinned stripper in a movie that is basically the epitome of colorism like the movie like you were not that good of a dancer and i think in the beginning uh like you just like if you really look at the Players Club, it is really colorism. Like a lot of folks just desired her, and it was a lot of rappers, a lot of black men who were just loving on her, ready to spend money on her because she was so desired, because she was light skinned and thin. When you had all these other dark skinned women who was out here getting it, out here clapping, and Lisa just came out there. What's her name? Diamond? Diamond come out here doing this. Like very basic. Bad, bad, huh? And like, it was so bad, men wanted to chase her and, and snatch her out home, dirty apartment. But you had the other girls was in there clapping, clapping, clapping. And all Diamond had to do was this. You remember, it's the same thing as um, Down at the Paint, where what's name wasn't doing that much of a good dance, but she was just light skinned, she was desirable. Like, color is, so it's just like, I just can't understand, well, I can't understand, because Lisa Ray ain't never been challenged on anything. She's never had to use her intellectual thought for anything. This is why I find it so far funny when we watch these, like, these new shows, these pop-up shows on YouTube, where it's really just Fox and these other folks who just throwing a couple of dollars at these folks who don't have any other source of income. Like, hey, girl, talk and be stupid for a minute. And I guarantee you, y'all say something that's real stupid to the point that it's damaging Fox or anything, they'll just kick you out to the side and, 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 and hire the next person who's taking this bare minimum check. Like, just glad to be gainfully employed. So, um, Lisa Ray, nobody's coming to you for thought-provoking content. Nobody. So, we, I don't know why you even hopped on to even think like that you have the mental capacity to even critique or have some type of policy when it comes to this. Like, ain't nobody, Lisa Ray, ain't nobody coming to you for you to talk about colorism and you just don't get it. You was stuttering because you didn't even, you didn't believe the bullshit that was coming out your mouth. Like, girl, like, see, sis? Like, you are the ultimate scammer. Like, you you are the one that's using your desirability to get in the places that you are in. The only reason why you are on this platform is because of that movie you did. Lisa Ray, you like, that's it. Your whole brand is built on colorism. Like, not you talking about colorism. You benefiting from colorism. That's your brand. So, no, since we're not interested in your critique or your conversation about it, and I'm not even sure what Claudia Jordan said, but Claudia Jordan be saying, it's a bitch in spider head ass that she ain't want to tell you folks the truth. Like, she ain't got the range either. Girl, I was so irritated watching it. Girl, I was just irritated. You can tell. But, then I tell y'all on Twitter, for those who follow me on Twitter, I said, girl, we're going to be talking about some things. It's going to be a, a, a long video, two parts. Go ahead and click on the next one, because I'm going to see y'all later. <laughs>